the Philippines, a paradise full of sand, sun, and God's beautiful splendor. A display cabinet for the works of the Most High, tucked away out of sight of the world. A place where natural beauty and calm can wash over you like the waves on the sand. And then you blink and suddenly you're transported to a vast land of luxury and expense with grand displays of wealth and ingenuity, grandeur and extravagance. A place where your wildest dreams can come true. If you believe it, you can achieve it. A place where anything is possible. A monument to the best that mankind has to offer. What more could you possibly want? Oh, I know. How about a chance to hit it big? You and millions of others can risk their hard-earned cash for a chance at the good life. Waiting. Waiting on that lucky spin. On that life-changing roll. Just having one more drink. One more smoke. One more lucky hand. All designed to get you to go all in on fun. And to forget about the ugly truth. Less than a mile away from the nation's largest casino, we find a very different set of circumstances. A far cry from the opulence and luxury of the casinos exists a genuine concrete jungle, with vines made out of power cables and foliage out of advertisement signs. Within this jungle you will find a multiplicity of small hovels, cobbled together with steel sheet metal and borrowed power. These residents contain many of Manila's poor, most of which go without water on a daily basis, while the aforementioned casino has a water fountain that displays music and lights the size of 50 Olympic swimming pools. And while the living conditions aren't exactly optimal, the alternative is even less so. All right. Uh, since 2010, when the Lord allowed us to start this ministry, you know, Christ-Centered Baptist Church here in Paranaque City, um, 16 villages, and with 500,000 people, a lot of people. And you can count in your fingers the churches who preach the gospel, really, like four or five, and probably we are number five. And the Lord really burdened our hearts. And the really blessing is, you know, experiencing for eight years, we are just renting a place, you know, but uh, the blessing is not about the place. It's about the people, really, uh, that uh, will be saved because you, the Lord used you to, to share the gospel to them, you know, and it's not about uh, money or, you know, and you are just presenting the truth that Jesus can save them, you know, that you don't have to pay, you don't have actually to be a member of a church or do something good, you know, like the other religions teaching. But we are teaching the Bible, that Jesus is the only way to get to go to heaven. So we saw a lot of that. If I will discuss the situation of our people, you know, if there's a 100%, it means if there is like a, 110 million people in the Philippines. That's our population right now. The real rich or those people who have really have money, probably less than 5%. And those living like in the middle class, probably 15 to 
and the remaining, the 75%, are really in the poor situation. Imagine you will work, for example, in the McDonald's. In the States, it's $12 to $20 an hour. Here, $12 a day for eight hours. So that's our, the situation of our people here. Yes, here in Manila, a lot of people, imagine uh, only 16 cities, 20 million people. And here in our city, you know, you will see a lot of condominiums, a lot of malls, and some casinos, you know. And the reality is, even the people are going there, especially in the mall, they are not buying. They're just there to make feel comfortable because of, because of the air condition, because they don't have in their houses. And it's kind of like a bonding for the family. They will just go there and eat. You know, a burger, a piece of burger, and, and the Filipino, you know, even though we, it's hard to live in here, we are in a third world country. One good trait for the Filipinos, uh, we are happy people. That's why you will see in the airport, it's more fun in the Philippines, you know, and now love the Philippines. So, loving people and many foreigners, not only in the United States. But all around the world, they will say, yeah, they have a good place, but we love the people. But the thing is, even though we have a, a, like a loving people, even though, you know, we have more poor people, you know, even though we have some rich people like that, it doesn't matter if, the, if they die without the Lord Jesus Christ being their Savior. Our people will die and you know we will all face the living god and we will be in judgment and only those people especially our people who really, really trusted the lord jesus christ, christ as their personal savior will be going to heaven so that's our heart desire uh, yes here in manila it's like a uh, composed of really rich and really poor or middle class it doesn't matter it's about the soul of men, you know. It doesn't matter if they are lovable or not, you know, if they are rude or not, if they are happy or sad. It's about the Lord who can give real joy, real peace, you know, and salvation, of course, eternal life. That's the most important. So it's really hard to, especially, the really, it's really break my heart, Brother Jan that uh, a lot of people, of our people, are poor. But if you die without the Lord, you know, it's much worse experience is coming on that uh, hell, you know, the wrath of God. But you know, thinking that even though our people are poor, but when we share the gospel to them, and then when they really accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, it, it's fine. It's better to live here on earth, nothing, you know, but you have God and then die with, with the Lord and you have eternal life. Hey, we're at one of the feeding centers. Um, they do this twice a month, JP and Mylene and their church. And what's interesting is one of the young men that's helping now, when they first started these feeding centers, he was six years old. And... Uh, now uh, he's preparing to be a pastor so they're starting to see the fruit of their labor and uh, so it's just a really neat thing his name's Joe Mail, and uh, it's just such a neat neat story um, they started feeding him here at six and now he's in the church and getting ready to become a pastor and we praise the Lord for him After visiting the first neighborhood, the team heads across the city to the second and final stop to teach even more children about the gospel and provide them with what will likely be their only hot meal of the day. At this second stop, the team will hear from various individuals who have come up through the same programs, learning about the gospel and receiving meals out of the charity of the Kawili family.
Hi everyone, um, my name is Jomel Batigas and I am 18 years old and th this is my home and I remember many years ago when Pastor JP and Sister Marilyn was a children ministry, have a children ministry, the first children ministry and uh, I remember that teaching teaching me and our and my fellow friends and we got a, we got a save and Jesus Christ is our savior and thank God for grace that saved me and we thank we thank uh, we thank you we thank from Pastor JP and Sister Mylene from teaching teaching me that Jesus Christ is our savior and thank you Hello everyone, I'm Sister Eloida and we're here at Arabella Street in Cachalian, Metro Manila. 11 years ago, I met Sister Mylene and uh, Pastor JP, which led me to Jesus Christ, which is our Savior. And now, I am with the one teaching the children and soon to be missionary. Okay. Yeah. Hello everyone, uh, good morning. I am Pastor Lorenzo Valle. And I am a pastor to the uh, and a teacher also to these children. So this wonderful morning. Wonderful. And we are uh, and my senior pastor is uh, Pastor JP Kawili and her husband is Mylin Kawili also. And uh, we are uh, uh, we are uh, ministering these children to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Thank you guys and have a good day. Thank you. The current state of the Philippines and its people has a lot to do with its history, part of which we're about to take a look at. The Philippines is a country with a long and storied history. But much of that history has not been self-directed. Rather, it has been subject to the winds of other foreign powers. It is in fact a history that is marred by violence and marked with the transgressions and aggression of larger nations. The exhibit that you are about to view is a monument to such atrocities. It commemorates the Manila Massacre, during which 100,000 citizens, both soldier and civilian, were slaughtered by the invading Japanese forces. Many survivors were caged in this very small dungeon by the water's edge. During the rains, many drowned, and those that survived only did so by swimming to the top of a small grate in the roof, which they used for air. Many countries have sought to possess and oppress the Philippines and its people. Using the island nation as a path for trade, a bank of natural resources, and a hub for cheap labor. But now the Philippines finds itself under a new type of occupation. Roman Catholicism has been the dominant form of religion in the Philippines with 78% of current Philippine citizens claiming to be Roman Catholic. This means that out of a population of 110 million, roughly 86 million claim the Roman Catholic faith, a staggering number to be sure. Across the city from the cathedral you just saw, we find a little blue and white private school run by the Isidoro family. Here they endeavor to teach children academics as well as the gospel, all while providing a safe place for them to learn and grow. Oh! 
In addition to the school, Mr. Isidoro pastors a small church with a thriving congregation. Their love for Christ is very apparent. In addition to coffee, cookies, and some other small treats, they had us try a local delicacy called Balut, something of which I am not necessarily the biggest fan, but I'll let my reaction speak for itself. Can you give it to someone else? Your dad told me to get the soup. No, come on. I've already done this. I've already done this. You gotta drink the soup, just the soup. See, you don't play the umawa. Come on, come on. See, you don't play the umawa. Yeah. 
Sometimes you turn the lens. So go to turn it. Turn it that way. Right there, right there. Turn it. Turn the lens. Right here, right here. Turn it. Turn it this way. Yeah, yeah. And get close on that. Yes, so as you can see, Balut is a fertilized yet not fully matured duck egg, of which you're supposed to drink the soup and some even eat the duck on the inside. Not something I'll be trying again, but an experience nonetheless. Aside from the balloon, it was a truly wonderful church service. I even got to sit down afterward and conduct an interview with the church's deaf population. I believe that you will truly enjoy what they had to say. I know that I did. Okay, lang. Start now. Tell me who wants to do the testimony, maybe what God's about the sheep David that I learned today God is saying that it helps us as sheep when one is lost all of the shepherds and the 100 that was now together because of the 99 that was lost, that's how I feel as a sheep. She's saying that it's the same as when God saved me from the dead. It's a David, when David happened, it's the same in the Bible as I am. And it was sa that I am saved from the dead. As a sheep. When God saw that, when God sent the devil and he sent him to hell, all of the people are now bad. And some of them are also killed and they are bad. And a lot of them do sin, they drink, and they do a lot of different things. But God see them, and when we pray, some of the people, even in the fire, they are killed and they are bad. But God took us. Ha! <laughs> okay. And he said that some people do drugs as well. But all of them, all of the people are not good. And God saw that. So now in the church, I am here in the church because I don't want to be like them. He doesn't want to be like the other people who do those other bad things outside of the church. Mm. Okay, he said, she also said that it was in the past that they were sad, but now she's changed and is strong in the Lord. And the enemy is trying to tempt her, and, but God know, but she knows that her sins are washed by the Lord. And now are saved and love the peoples of the Lord.
All of the people who are bad in the and the God, the Lord sees it. So now we stay away from the devil and the sin and temptation as well. But a lot of the people and all of the parents as well, many of them stay away from God and in their hearts. Yes, a lot of them are sinners, but now they are brought to church, and that's how she feels. She is now brought to the church. How has this place affected your life? How has habits affected you to bridge the gap? How? Hearing and not hearing. How? <laughs> She's saying that all of us here, the deaf, go to church because we want to learn from the Lord and the Bible and we want to understand and um, she interprets for us, and I, I am thankful for her. And all of you guys are welcome here too. And I am very, very happy to be in this church because I am able to join with the hearing and all of the people here in the church. And all of the same people as well. And now I am sa saved from the darkness. Thank you very much. From this what? Okay. So one light. <laughs> a lot of the people who are sinners they ignore the bible they ignore it and they don't want it but this will help them and the people even though they're bad but in the church they will be helped and so this will be a help to them and i am thankful for that She's saying that the video in the movie is very beautiful because a lot of the people of us, we can see it and we're happy. Thank you for giving this and the responsibility that you take on. And even in TikTok and all the world will be able to see and watch here in the Philippines. And we'll see our church here. Thank you and you're welcome again in our church. Thank you so much here for the video and for taking time. It's so beautiful. To the world. She said that her experience is not easy and how Jesus has brought it here. And all of the years, the things that had happened and why the devil and all of the influence as a Christian, but now the people, they don't know because the devil is strong. 
but the Christians and Jesus are helping me. That is why it's in the Bible, it's able to help me. And I'm able to understand who and how God is helping me and teaching me about the Word of God and is able to help me. And all the things that happen in the world and why it happens. Even though the devil is there to do all of the things that happen that are bad and all the things that are happening, I'm asking why? Why does it happen? But, but Jesus does a lot of things for me and even in the past, the Christians are helping me too. So it's right. And the shepherd is the same. And the people are the same. Like, and all of the people who are searching and they don't know what to do, they're choosing. Okay, she's saying about the shepherd again. And even though the, um, the sheeps are far away and they're having a hard time, the Lord is still helping them as a shepherd and they're teaching them and helping them and all the people in the Word and helping them all together. This will help them to be together and we stay away from the devil and, and it will help them away from what is evil. And now she's saved. He's saying that in the family in the church, a lot of the people are helping about what would happen, what happened and the, the enemy is doing a lot of things and they feel that maybe they are away or they are separated, but they are being taught and helped. And all of the temptations that are happening in the, the devil looking at us and we try to stay away from it. We stay away from the devil and the temptation. So a lot of people now in the church are telling me, okay, we should go and follow and pray in the family in the church and continue to pray. After all the temptation of the devil, I know that I will stay away and I know that God will not be mad at me and I will be okay in the church. And in the family, I am now happy and I am protected away from the devil. The, the world is being helped by God and the people to do all the good things. And the people that are doing bad things and are ignoring, now they will be able to give and give from all of their sins. Yes, and all of the things that will stop it, all of the things that are stopping them from knowing God and being in a relationship with Jesus, the church also is the same. And all of that will stop them from hindering into being with the church. I want to say that the deaf ministry in our church, it's not the best. But we know, we know that all of the people, they want to learn about God and they desire God. It's, it feels different because this church is, uh, there's a lot of hearing people. And I know that sometimes they feel that they're separated from the world, but the church here, they're all family to us. And I am happy that they are welcoming us into who they are and letting us understand more about who their group is. And in their family as well. Putting us in the family of them, even if some of the people or the members of the church don't understand. They try and try because we're all family here. And I know that a lot of the churches now 
don't have a lot of deaf ministries, and we hope that by seeing this, they will understand that they need Jesus too. And it's hard sometimes because people don't want to be in fellowship with them. But now that, that you're seeing it, I hope it will encourage you to bring them into the church more and more and bring them in the family of Christ as well. Thank you for showing all of my friends here in the Philippines and hope that you can visit us and maybe one day fellowship with us too. Just before the end of our trip, we met back up with Brother J.P. Kawili to celebrate the launch of a brand new ministry called HIM. HIM stands for His Ideal Missions. The organization seeks to gather support from churches across the Philippines to reach the unchurched. Currently, HIM consists of 12 different churches with over 400 members, which are all dedicated to pursuing the cause of Christ, even in the most remote areas of the Philippines. Christ is truly at work in this country, and that is truly on display in its beauty, warmth, and in the smiles of its people. So join us as we band together for the cause of Christ and pray for us as we collectively strive to. Praise the Lord.